Four Virtues for Good Leadership, The Basics of Stoicism Hello my good people, welcome to our channel. Today we'll be looking at the four virtues for good leadership. Stay tuned to gather more. 1. Wisdom Philosophy is defined as a love of wisdom. According to Diogenes Laertius' Lives of the eminent philosophers, the Stoics describe wisdom as knowing what is good and bad as well as what is neither good nor bad. Knowledge of what we should pick, what we should avoid, and what is neutral. Following this understanding, wisdom ultimately guides action. There is a space between stimulus and response, according to Viktor Frankl. We have the ability to select our reactions in that area. The possibility for insight lies in that area. The first step is realizing that space exists. In that area, we can either implement the lessons we have learned from our reading or toss them aside and behave impulsively. 2. Temperance the golden medium, as Aristotle refers to it, indicates that virtue lies squarely in the middle between excess and insufficiency. Desires and excess are connected with unhappiness and discontentment. They are a destructive impulse. Knowing that having the necessities leads to abundance is what is meant by having temperance. The Stoics frequently use the terms self-control and temperance interchangeably. Self-control not simply with regard to worldly possessions, but always in pleasure or pain, adorations or disdain, failure or success. Temperance guards against extremes by neither depending on transient pleasure for happiness or allowing transient sorrow to ruin it. 3. Courage The central query that Emilio Paris possess poses to John Grady, which gets to the heart of life and what each of us must do in order to live a life that is worthwhile will be etched into your memory if you have read Cor McCarthy's bleak and stunning novel all the pretty horses. The world wants to know if you have cojones, if you are brave. Perhaps the Stoics would have said it differently. Seneca would claim that he truly felt sorry for those who have never suffered adversity. Someone once asked Epictetus what words would make a person prosper. He said two words should be memorized and obeyed, endure and resist. You have passed through life without an opponent, he said. No one can ever know what you are capable of, not even you. Look at William Alexander. He renounced his single status in favor of adopting his three little relatives. Walker Percy attempted to remain composed and philosophical over the increasing flood of racism and hatred that engulfed his generations and to be a quiet light of goodness through his writing. As Mike Duncan explains in his discussions, Publius Rutilius Rufus was falsely accused and unfairly prosecuted before ultimately becoming a force that inspired change against corruption. Nero can kill me, but he cannot harm me. Seneca said in his dying breath to a psychotic dictator. Each battle took a tremendous amount of guts, even though it was ultimately unsuccessful. Each demand standing up against the security of the established quo and making one's own decisions. 4. Justice Marcus Aurelius believes that justice was the most significant of the four Stoic virtues. It was the source of all the other virtues, in his words. After all, if courage is solely motivated by self-interest, what good is it? If knowledge is not applied to benefit everyone, what good is it? Cicero, who agreed with Marcus that justice is the crowning splendor of the virtues, is a good place to start when trying to comprehend the virtue of justice. Summum bonum from Cicero served as our opening phrase. Cicero was referred in his day and throughout history for more than merely using those words as a catchphrase though. There has never been a finer statesman and philosopher together than Cicero, according to John Adams. The Declarations of Independence, according to Thomas Jefferson, was based on the elementary literature of public rights, such as those by Aristotle, Cicero, Locke, Sidney, etc. Cicero was a Roman senator and held every key Roman position at the earliest legal ages permissible. But he and the other Stoics weren't thinking about justice in the way the world is typically used today. For them, it related to our interactions with and obligations to our fellow humans in a far wider context. The four Stoic virtues were first introduced by Cicero in the Officius, his thorough investigations and writing of the ethical philosophy of the Stoics of his period. According to him, the principle that forms the connections of human society and of a virtual community is justice. Justice is a virtue that results from wisdom applied to our acts. Yet, in Stoicism, this is a broad idea that is better represented as social virtue. Marcus Aurelius regularly reminds himself that his actions should be focused on achieving wisdom and virtue, the ultimate purpose of life. But the virtue of justice must also have an external goal, and for the Stoics, that goal is the welfare of all people. 
every action a stoic takes should, in some tiny way, benefit humanity, or at the very least, should not have the opposite effect. This is what we may call stoic charity or brotherly affection. Stoics must, however, pursue other people's welfare with the qualifications that they are externals outside of our direct control. This is the caveat, faith permitting, known as the Stoic Reserves Clause. And that's it for today, guys. Thank you for tuning in.